Conditionals are a very important part of programming, and they come down to really one question. Is this true or is it false? Uh, you can use that information then to decide whether you execute further instructions to the computer, for another block of code. Uh, a really basic and common one is the if statement, and the syntax looks something like this. Uh, you start off by taking uh, what's in between the parentheses here and evaluating is this statement true or false. Uh, and if it happens to be true, you move on to the next block of code in between the curly brackets and you do whatever's happening in between there. But if it's not true, if that original statement where you're evaluating it's uh, true or false, if it's false, this whole block of code gets skipped. Uh, it only happens when it's true. And we can use this to our advantage to do certain things in our program. And you can kind of think through your program as a series of decisions of whether something's true or false and uh, creating various pathways through your program. So let's look at an example here where we actually change the color of a circle that's on the screen. So you'll remember from my uh, earlier interaction video that we had this circle following the mouse X and mouse Y position. Uh, if we now instead use this uh, block of code that I introduced before, the key pressed uh, function, which is a block that we're responds to the event of actually pressing a key on the keyboard. We can actually add some conditional statements here inside here. So if we have an if statement, uh, if that key, after we know that a key has been pressed on the keyboard, if we know that that key happens to be an R, let's do one thing, and else if the key happens to be a G, we'll do something else, and else if the key happens to be a B, then we'll do something else. Okay, so we're evaluating three things in order, in sequence here. First, is that key equal to R? Second, is that key equal to G? Third, is that key equal to B? And the, the, these happen sequentially. So the first one, we'll just turn the fill color to red. Okay, R for red. The second one, we can actually turn it to blue. And then with the third one, we can change the fill color to green. And now we've created some, some clear interaction here with our program where first we look at whether the key has been pressed, that event triggers this block of code. And once we know that a key has been pressed, we're evaluating first, was it an R? Second, was it a G? Third, was it a B? And these happen sequentially. So if I run this now, my circle follows the mouse around still. But when I hit the R, it changes to red. When I hit the G, it changes to green. And I hit the blue, it changes to blue. And I can kind of change it up here by playing with the keys on the keyboard. With a few more tweaks, we can get some different interaction. So first thing, for, uh, after we test for the R, G, and B, we might actually want to create a condition where any other key changes the color to white. So we can just fill that in here with an else. Uh, else is basically the final uh, piece of an if conditional statement. It basically is the piece of code that you want to run if none of the other conditions are, are true. So I'm going to go ahead and just fill in something here where it changes to white after uh, changing from RGB. Any other key is going to change it to white. Okay. Um, lastly, we can actually uh, we can get kind of a painting effect if we start to uh, use the, the 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 mouse pressed as a system variable. So we've been using key pressed and and mouse pressed as kind of events uh, functions that are driven by specific events, but there are also states as well that are available to our processing code. So I'm going to move the background up here, okay, and then I'm going to say if mouse pressed, and what that basically says is when the mouse is pressed, I want you to actually execute this little bit of code. I want you to draw this ellipse, but I only want you to draw it when the mouse is pressed, when it's down, when it's true, okay? This is different than the, line, the piece of code that we have down here, where this function only runs once at the moment that the mouse is pressed. This, because it's a, a system variable, it's the state of whether the mouse is pressed true or false. Uh, and in this case, when the mouse is pressed, I'm going to go ahead and make the ellipse a little bit smaller, it will draw our ellipse. So now when I hit play, um, you see I get nothing when I'm not pressing the mouse, but as soon as I press down the mouse key, I get this uh, circle that gets replaced uh, and uh, over and over layering on top of each other on the screen. And I can still use my R to change colors, my G to change to green, and my B to change to blue. And so I get a kind of a, a, a simple painting effect where I can kind of change colors and then paint with the mouse. So that's really uh, 
a few examples of how conditionals work and how you can use them to build some more complex interactions in your processing sketch.